Welcome back composers, arrangers, orchestrators, and anyone else who's, who's curious about the properties of the clarinet and the clarinet family. Today we're, uh, we're looking at, of course, clarinet, 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 clarinetto, and the clarinet. Okay, good. It's easy to identify in different languages. This is good news. Um, if flute is the soprano member of the, the orchestra, and we, we were calling oboe the alto member, what would you call the clarinet? Well, of course, you're thinking, well, it does have quite a large range. If you can just picture a, a common um, clarinet solo, or perhaps you're, you're hearing it in a um, uh, solo capacity or a um, chamber music capacity or, or orchestral, well, it does have a, a rather large high range and low range. It's, that, it's for that reason you can think of it as both the alto and tenor member. So it's extending the range uh, lower than the oboe, which makes a lot of sense in terms of what we've seen so far um, that uh, we have the score order flute, oboe, clarinet. Okay, so this is extending the range a little lower. Um, if the oboe and the bassoon are members of the double reeds, then of course the clarinet would be a member of the, you guessed it, single reeds. In fact, you can even go to the single reed convention once a year in normal times, uh, where you'd find a good number of saxophonists and clarinetists um, playing lots of good music and selling uh, manuscripts and, uh, uh, you know, learn, learning about the finer techniques of, um, of their reeds. Okay, as we've seen so far, the flute was cylindrical. Uh, we're talking about the end of the instrument that we're, that it's, it's the same from top to bottom. It's that cylindrical or um, versus uh, the, the uh, oboe, which we saw was conical. So what, what would you say is the clarinet? Of course, conical as well. You can picture that flare at the bell, which of course contributes to um, the sound. It's not the only thing that contributes to the resulting sound, but it is conical. This is an interesting property of, of the clarinet that it does have a register key. Any clarinetist will, would know this, but if you don't play clarinet, if you have no background in, in um, this transposing instrument, you might not know that the register key uh, overblows at the, uh, it's more than an octave actually, it's the 12th. It's almost as if um, it's a, it's a uh, stop on an organ. I'm sure you've heard of the, uh, the term pulling out all the stops. Well, that comes from organ playing where, you, where you're activating different pipes of the, the organ. Uh, so that overblowing the, the pipe that would overblow at the 12th, which, uh, which of course is higher, which is an interesting uh, property of the clarinet. And uh, perhaps you've heard someone squeak in your time. I, I certainly have, have heard it. I'm not naming names, but um, this is what you're activating when you're squeaking, you're going into that, that higher range. Okay, the two that you should really, you should know well, and really, of course, we're, we're talking principally about the clarinet in B flat. You should know about the clarinet in A, uh, only because it is rather common. And, and of course, if you have a piece that is in a sharp key, um, it might be very useful for you as an educator or just a, a kind composer who doesn't want to give, let's see, uh, B major to, to uh, a younger, player, or perhaps you know you only have one rehearsal and you want it to go very smoothly, well, consider giving, um, you know, uh, writing for the appropriate clarinet that would help your process along. Um, it is only one half step difference, but you would be surprised it does make a small difference in terms of, of course, range, but also it's slightly darker, the A clarinet. Um, so I should, I should clarify that. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to get some sound here. Here we go. So if you if you have uh, a written, we, we would say middle C, right, on the piano, um, <clears throat> although that's that would be the, the, the first written C on the clarinet. If they were, were to see that on the page, of course, the B-flat instrument, you know already, uh, the resulting pitch would come out uh, a whole step lower. And of course, 
If it's for A clarinet, it comes out a minor third lower. Okay, so you can you can see how this is useful if if you were to write a C major scale for an A uh, clarinet in A, the resulting sound would be A major. Both of these sound lower than what's written. This is important to keep in mind. Okay, E flat soprano clarinet. We we've looked at this a little bit already. Um, this is one of the few instruments that sounds higher than written. It's the other direction. It, it's very easy to confuse the A clarinet and the E flat clarinet. So I would I would write this down for yourself. Make sure you understand that. Well, if you have a C major scale, you've written in C major for the E flat clarinet. Well, the resulting pitch will be a minor third higher E flat major. Again, this could be very useful for accessing a, a higher range, something that's a little less extreme. Perhaps you want to explore the high range of the clarinet, but you don't want to you don't want it to feel extreme or sound extreme or to be too difficult for your player. We'll consider using the E flat clarinet. OK. Um, of course, there's the B flat contra, E flat contra, Bassett horn and F. Uh, these are all uh, on the rarer side. Um, I, and I, I'm sorry, I skipped over quickly because I had a, a sound issue for a moment. Um, the, of course, the B flat bass clarinet, which uh, looks exactly the same on the page as the clarinet in B flat, as we'll see, but the resulting pitch is an octave lower. So you could relate this to the double basses, for instance, or uh, the contrabassoon, both of which do the same thing. They, the resulting pitch is an octave lower. But it is a transposing instrument. So again, if you wrote a C major scale, let's say uh, it's written here on the staff, on the, on the treble staff, the resulting pitch will be an octave plus a second lower. So really, you're you're exploring a, a quite low range, um, just by writing in that in that uh, mid to low register. Okay, so we'll see some more specifics about range and the clarinet shortly. Speaking of which, range. Okay, this is something to to memorize, especially the low note of the clarinet. This is the written low note, a low E. Okay, so this would be written. The resulting pitch, of course for a B-flat instrument would be the major second below. The resulting uh, pitch for the A clarinet, you guessed it, is a minor second, second lower than that. Okay, so that, that would be the, the resulting pitch is C-sharp. All right, the high pitch, the, the highest note in terms of range is debatable because it would, it would depend on the player and, and how virtuosic they are and if they've explored their high range. Um, your text gives A as, as uh, the highest note. Wow, that's up there. Some, some clarinetists might be able to squeak out a bit more, but I wouldn't ask them. I really wouldn't ask them to do that unless I knew the player and I knew that they wanted something that explores that extreme. Okay. Uh, this is the bass clarinet, and um, notice that this is the, the sounding pitch. So uh, it would be written, this is very important, this would be written on the treble clef. It would not be written on the, the using the bass clef. It would be using the treble clef. So again, it would look like, let's say, starting on middle C, and that the resulting pitch would be an octave plus a second. So this allows you to access, of course, the lower range. And uh, the bass clarinet has an extension that goes down to the B flat, the low sounding B flat, meaning that they have a written C. OK, this is allows them, of course, to it's a common key for um, you know, B flat instruments is a common key for clarinet, saxophones. It allows them to to uh, explore that those lowest notes. They come in handy, especially because the bass clarinet is often asked to play a kind of bass role. 
you can imagine, let's say, a string quartet while you have your, your roles, right, of violin one, violin two, viola, cello. Well, the same could be said for a clarinet quartet. So you'd, you'd have E flat clarinet, perhaps two B flat clarinets, or maybe you have an A clarinet, and then you'd have a, a low bass clarinet. Um, I should say, just say bass clarinet um, in the bass role, okay? Um, about all of the clarinets, this is this really applies to all of them. Think of them as a swell, as in the lowest range will be stronger naturally or harder to control at a lower volume than, let's say, the mid register versus the extreme high. Okay, and of course that that um, requires quite a lot of air and it's just difficult to control those those uh, extreme high notes. Uh, you want to avo not avoid them, but approach with caution. Um, again, know your player and know that it will be naturally louder. It's not to say you can't write piano, but it, it's much more difficult to produce. So it's not idiomatic for the instrument to produce an extreme, uh, extreme soft uh, in the high or low. Okay, this is a, a curious thing that's specific just to clarinet. Again, it's a very special in instrument. Um, I would memorize this if I were you. I would I would memorize it from low to high. That the clarinet has four distinct sub ranges. So it has it has the overall range, and then within that we have four distinct sort of sounds, uh, depending on let's say the tessitura where where you put your music. So if you were to write a piece, let's say in the Shalomo range, it tends to be rich, um, a little bit uh, uh, harder to control in the extreme low range, uh, the mid range. Notice that it stops at the written B flat. This is this is the the for the written uh, manuscript. Um, notice that it stops on the written B flat. Can you think of a good reason for that? You probably know a bit about fingering. If you don't, uh, you would want to write this down. But this is what's called the break between the B flat and the B. Right? Actually, it's up here in octave. If if this is the written, let's say this is clarinet and B flat. Well, that of course will be sounding A flat and A. So I think the easiest way to refer to all of these just for consistency is just think of the written uh, first because they're interchangeable in terms of this will apply to the B flat instrument or the A instrument or the E flat instrument. So just think of the written uh, clarinet part and you'll be okay. Okay, so of, of any two, you should really know that between throat tones and clarino, that stops at the break between B flat and B. Okay, that's the written range. Clarino is, of course, higher, more song like. Okay, you often find solos for in, in that range. Uh, and then the high range, that's called altissimo. Again, harder to control the extreme high range. Um, but of course, it, it could be quite effective. Let's say you want a kind of uh, bird-like sound, or maybe you just want an extreme high note held. Well, this is this is uh, easy to perform, and um, you know, between and, and as long as you're um, observing the break, um, it can basically jump all over the place in in terms of just how agile the instrument is. So think of it much like the flute. Basically, it can do just about anything, um, as long as you know where the extremes are, and in the case of the clarinet, where the break is. Now, I didn't quite explain the break very well. Um, th the break has to do with the fingering, as in the fingering essentially starts over. So if you were to give a, a trill, oh, sorry, it's down here. Right, if you were to trill back and forth on B flat to B, or C flat if you want to, uh, spell it differently. Well, that's really cruel. 
because you're, you're having them put all of their fingers down and back. Um, if you ask any clarinetist, can you demonstrate the break and why it's a, a problem? Well, they'll show you something like that, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's not easily accessible between those two notes. So that is something to avoid. But besides that, you can have fast scales that run up and down. I just wouldn't oscillate between uh, those two notes. Okay, in terms of tonguing, uh, single tonguing, smooth legatos, all very idiomatic, uh, legato, staccato. Oh, uh, so this phrase, di ta ta. This is just making the point, this is from your Blatter textbook, that um, this is a common articulation. You can, you can try singing this at home. Ti ya ta ta, ti ya ta ta. That's where you're connecting from the first note, ti ya. And you have a, a staccato, ti ya ta ta, ti ya ta ta. Okay, quite a common idiomatic, meaning it's fitting the instrument very well, um, technique. Um, of course, we've already said B flat clarinets are the most common. Um, a, the A clarinet is slightly darker. Um, I think it would be very difficult if you were to, to have a listening exam and, and I asked you, okay, is this the B flat instrument or the A instrument? I think you would have a hard time identifying. However, if you, um, perhaps I played the same example with using two different clarinets. You might hear a small difference that the A clarinet is slightly darker. Um, of course, it does have one extra half note, and uh, I'm sorry, half step, uh, leading down to the, the low sounding C sharp. For a composer, this can be very important. And for singers, you know well that, well, there's some arias you just can't touch because maybe it's out of your range by one half step. Or perhaps you know, oh, well, if I sing this song or this aria, this selection, I need to take it up or down a half step because that's that really fits my uh, my tessitura better. Um, uh, the tessitura fits, fits my range. So um, you know that a, the difference of a half step can make a big difference for singers and it can for clarinetists as well. So think about that next time you're, you ha you're given the option um, you're about to compose for, oh, oh let's say, a, a woodwind quintet, or perhaps if you're lucky, you could write a band piece or an orchestral piece. Well, consider the piece you're, you're writing, the key it's in, and um, the difficulty that's resulting because of that key. Uh, you might want to choose B flat or A clarinet. Okay, this is getting into the, the bass clarinet just a bit, the, the fact that it's very rich, mellow, it's, a use, it's useful in ensemble. Uh, it is a distinguished solo voice that's, that's seldom used. It's something that you should explore if you have the opportunity to write for a bass clarinet. I would encourage you to, to explore it as a solo instrument. Um, there is a D clarinet. Again, this you know, the, the world of orchestration is not so easy, is it? It has many exceptions and addendums. Um, just know there is a D clarinet. It, it sounds a whole step higher. I don't expect you to know it. We've already talked about the, the three most common transpositions, B flat, A, and E flat. Um, and of course, as your text points out, uh, this is more for professional ensembles. It is more penetrating, and uh, it's something that you should utilize if you want to uh, spend a lot of time in that high range without taxing uh, the clarinetists. Okay. So we'll listen to some examples in, in class, the, the Sibelius First Symphony, Rimsky-Korsakov, Scheherazade, Tchaikovsky, Symphony Number no. 1. And of course, all of these are demonstrating different things, the throat tones, that middle range, Scheherazade, the, the agility, the, the ability to do all kinds of different uh, leaping, jumping, uh, runs, all kinds of different things. Uh, Tchaikovsky, Symphony Number no. 1 uh, is very expressive. Okay, we'll listen to these um, in class, so we'll, we'll spend some more time with the clarinet. So this gives you a good foundation for the basics of clarinet. If you were to, um, to write anything down, uh, for your experience, uh, 
composing and arranging soon for the clarinet, it would be that uh, you have the range of the low written E uh, extending up to uh, the A uh, or maybe even the C, depending on the clarinetist, um, that there are three different transpositions. One is the most common, the B flat clarinet, which sounds a whole step lower. Uh, the, the next most common, you do see the E, uh, I'm sorry, the, the A clarinet, which sounds a minor third lower. And one of the few transpositions that sounds higher, that's the E flat clarinet. Um, you also want to make special note, I see a lot of, of um, students making the same mistake, and that is when you write for the bass clarinet, it is written in treble clef. It is written in treble clef. And what's that low note that it has? Well, it has the low sounding B flat, which would be written C on the staff. Okay, I hope that's given you a, a good start for the clarinet. We'll hear more examples and we'll hear your fellow students uh, uh, demonstrate in class and uh, that should give us a good start for it. So I hope you have a wonderful day and again, uh, take care and be well.